being outdoors gives you a different look at life. Well, I can remember every September 1st was opening of dove season. It was just a fun family time. You know, I like to climb trees and I like to be outside. I like to play sports. And so I was always outside doing something. SCI Diana Award winner and NRA Women's Leadership Forum member, Sandra Sadler has a deep appreciation for the outdoors. From an early age, her family raised her to hunt and enjoy the freedoms that come along with it. When she and husband Byron first met, their shared interest provided an immediate spark. So it was natural then when I met Byron, he hunted and Byron would take me and it was so much fun. I loved it. I met over the phone. I, I had a business and my friend uh, had our insurance. All of a sudden my personal bank account was overdrawn. I was the receptionist and secretary at the insurance company. Anyway, I called, I called the insurance and she answered the phone and that's the first time we met. And she said, well, why don't you put some money in that account? <laughs> yes. Yeah. But that's the first time we talked. Yeah. And then we met about six months later and, and sparks flew. So he came into it with his eyes wide open. <laughs> We had a date, went dancing, and from there on, we've been best friends ever since. I had a business when we met, and then uh, when she came along, it just got a lot better. We entertained a lot of customers, and we had a lease down in Mexico, and we take hunters down there every year, and she went down, and they, we enjoyed the atmosphere, we enjoyed the different cultures, and uh, we loved the people there, and we just knew that we, that's something we wanted to do. And that was when I was reintroduced to hunting. We decided, setting our goals for what we wanted to do in life, we wanted to go internationally somewhere. So it kind of made sense that we would go hunting. <laughs> And all of a sudden we were in Africa and, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I guess we've been back nearly every year since. <laughs> in 1993, we made our first trip to South Africa. I shot a, an Impala and a Kudu. Kudu is right up there. And of course traveling and it was fun and so we just did it together. Still doing it. <laughs> we've been in the rainforest in Cameroon and to the highlands of China, to the lowlands of China. And uh, it, it, it's so different, you cannot pick one. Yeah, and I'm, of course, I'm the same way. We love experiencing meeting the people. That's a huge part of it. Uh, our outfitters, the trackers, mm. the experiences we have with that. Yeah. Kenya, yeah. <laughs> Byron learned to dance with the Samburu people and <laughs> just... Drank the blood from the goat and <laughs> it all works. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, hunting wasn't just a hobby for Sandra anymore. It was a pursuit and a passion. She set a goal to win the SCI Diana Award, one of the most prestigious awards in the hunting world. The Diana recognizes women who have built an impressive collection of big game trophies and also remain dedicated to enhancing wildlife conservation. Byron attributes Sandra's success in achieving this award to one thing. Of all the training I gave her. <laughs> <laughs> right, honey. <laughs> well, actually, Byron is the one that set his sights. I can remember it well. Pamela Atwood won the Diana that year, and we were sitting there, and I had started hunting. He could see I was really getting serious about doing it and doing it right. He said, you know, you could do that. And I'm like, oh, never. I couldn't ever achieve what these women are achieving that had won the Diana. You know, that's... That's a giant step forward. Very few people's ever been able to do it. And, and like again, from our background, uh, starting off, uh, I guess in 80, 93. 90, 93 and, and she broke her leg in Cameroon and six months later was back in Tanzania hunting elephant. I remember when, <clears throat> especially difficult hunt, when I went tur hunting in Azerbaijan. And before I went, Mike Simpson, who is a big hunter, and he said, Sandra, this is gonna be a tough hunt. Just remember, one step at a time. 
And boy, I remembered that a lot. And I made it about, oh, not even a fourth of the way up that mountain going, I cannot believe this. That was the first day. And I ended up taking my tour on the very top of that mountain five days later. But such a challenge when you finish with something like that, you go, whoo, I did that. <laughs> Didn't know I could, but I did. She's real determined and she don't know how to say no and she don't know the word give up. And uh, that's one of the things that you have to be tough, hard-headed, hard-minded to do the things we do together. And she's never whimpered, she's never backed off. And you talk about a perfect companion to, a, to somebody like myself that likes, loves outdoor and, and loves a challenge. Oh, I'm sure I got that one too. <laughs> when they aren't off on a hunt, Sandra and Byron are at the Two Dot Ranch, which they own and operate. At the ranch, they enjoy sharing their trophies and land with visitors, especially those from Combat Marine Outdoors, an organization that provides hunting and outdoor adventures to wounded military veterans. Well, we've been so blessed we like to share, especially with the Combat Marine Outdoors and these boys that you know, give so much for our country and we'd like to show our appreciation. Combat Marine Outdoors is, a, is an organization that helps Marines, Army, sailors, Air Force, anybody that's been wounded or, or severely injured. We try to get them back into the mainstream of life. And one of our goals is to help a lot of these young men get into the workforce. I am blown away. I can't say it any other way. This is amazing. Uh, you two folks are amazing people. This has been the most beautiful, wonderful experience of my life. These young men volunteer to go and serve our country. So it's something that we need to appreciate what they've done and look out for them and get them in the outdoors is just, that's just one of the best things in the world you can do for them. Oh, yeah. We feel very blessed. We feel very fortunate to be in a beautiful area like this. And, you know, we share it. You've heard it many times, you know. Hunters are the biggest conservationist in the world, bar none. You're paying license fees. You're paying trophy fees. You're benefiting the local industry there, the people who take you hunting the trackers who work with you, who otherwise might not be able to feed their families. And it is to make the survival of the animals. So it's a huge industry and we're proud of the industry and what they do because all of the hunters that I know work hard to give back. I mean, the animals would disappear without hunting. That's why hunters continue to fight it. We fight it politically every chance we can, and we are fighting to save the animals, save the species. I think every sportsman should be a member of SCI and NRA. It, it doesn't cost a lot of money, and you're, you're protecting the outdoors. And a woman doesn't have to hunt, but if they know the truth about hunting and conservation, they can pass that on to their children and encourage them to support it in any way they can. The concept is that the girls stay at home with the mother and don't go into the outdoors. They don't hunt. They aren't supposed to learn about guns. And I think that that's changed a lot. Y you know, the women have always been there, but it's been hunting and shooting. That's a man's thing. And so those women that were sh hunting and shooting just kind of stepped back until gradually the door opened for them to participate. But you can see from the Women's Leadership Forum that they are really jumping in. We are and will always be connected in spirit, united in our cause to defend the values we all share and hold dear. It's an unbreakable bond that ties us together. Just uh, an honor to be a member and, and, and be involved with uh, the leadership of Wayne LaPierre and, and Susan and, uh, and we're just Proud to be a part of it. Are there any trophy that you haven't gotten that you want to get, Sandra? Muskox. 
Hey. Yeah. Well. I've been wanting her to get a muskox for years. It's cold country. And she, she don't See, it's cold country. <laughs> We're going to do that next year. <laughs>